So let's start with you, Mr. Ramup. I want you to tell me a little bit about FAME, the launch that we have set for Thursday night. All right, FAME. FAME is an acronym for Foundation, Profession, Art, Manufacturing, Exports, and Entrepreneurship. So the whole object of FAME, as, as the uh, title says, is that what we want to do here is to actually build Trinidad and Tobago as a Centre for Excellence in the manufacturing of high-quality garment for exporting to the rest of the world. That's the, that's the bottom line. That's the punchline, if you like. But the, in addition to that, is to train people, to train people to a high standard so they can have fulfilling roles in employment. Okay, and what are your thoughts on local fashion as it stands right now? Local fashion is very exciting as far as the visual image is concerned, but what I think is very much quality of craftsmanship, how garments are made. You know, quite often you, you won't uh, describe or you won't criticize something about how they look, but you'll be very critical of how, we, how it's made. And so what we aim to do with FAME is to provide training and sustainable support, really, and advice and mentorship. Okay, is there an uh, age group that you're looking to target, or is it open? It's very open. It's very, very open. You've got to have one thing, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm to be creative. Perhaps love as well. You know, if, if you love what you do, then you don't have to work a day in your life. So you've got to be really creative, and you've got to think of yourself as being a sculptor of materials and creating beautiful clothing. Okay, so Mr. Peters, you're the founder and CEO of Saint International, right? Yeah. Um, you're here to lend support to uh, Mr. Ramup's initiative. Tell yes, me definitely. What are you lending support? Well, I'm quite Ramup. impressed with Andrew's initiative, and that's the reason why I'm here in Trinidad. The, the, the fact of the matter is we go way back, and he has been in Jamaica to support my initiative, which is Style with Jamaica. Now, over the years, Saint International as a model agency has established itself as a premier agency in the English-speaking Caribbean. And just recently, we were featured by Forbes magazine as the world's biggest exporter of black models, which is by any measure a real good achievement. Now, many of our models work for the biggest names in fashion. Only two days ago, we had Couture in Paris. We had four models working for the biggest brands, including Chanel and Armani in Paris. Um, with that kind of international renowned models, it's for me, and I think it's a responsibility to support initiatives such as this. It's not about just a one-off kind of fashion event. It's really, in my mind, a broad-based initiative looking at sustainable fashion function, if you will. Um, so it wasn't a problem for me to be here to say, look, I really endorse this initiative. I think it's a really good plan. Because, you see, for many people, fashion is really entertainment. What Andrew is saying is that the clothing can no longer be seen as purely looking good on stage, but beyond it, what is that ecosystem that is supporting the fashion game the to make sure the design, yeah, what's mm -hmm. the real substance to make sure they can go from the wrong way to retail, because that's what it is, and not just retail for the short term, but for the long haul. And so I'm here as Saint International, representing all my international star models, to say, look, Trinidad has it going on. I think it's the dawning of a new age in Trinidad fashion, and it's something that everyone should be a part of, especially the corporations of, of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, more importantly, too, there's the other side. Saint International's tagline is changing lives and expanding horizons. So it's in sync with the ambitions of fame. So I'm very, very anxious and very excited at what Trinidad and Tobago has in store for me as far as new faces is concerned. And the reality is, because of the number of models we have working and doing so well, major casting directors have been reaching out. Who do we have coming up next? Yes, we have stars already being prepared in Jamaica. For me, this platform can also be a great deal for Trinidad and Tobago youngsters. We're changing the lives, not just of the designers and the young design talent, but also of models. So we're looking for the next model stars from Trinidad and Tobago. But are you looking for something in particular, though? It's always a question I get. What are you looking for? Um, Personality is a big deal, and that's one of the things I say, come natural. No makeup, no false hair, just, you know, no long nails, just be very fresh. Um, facial features always a thing. Um, it doesn't matter the color, you know, the high cheekbones, the rest of it. But that's my scientific eye zoning in. I'll see that. Um, but more importantly, I just want people to be themselves. Um, you know, bodies are important in terms of what the, the physique is like. You know, many people think for male models, for example, you have to be bulky and brawny. No, that's not the case. 
Um, actually, my models who have done Louis Vuitton or Calvin Klein are usually on the slender side. So here we have two men, who, two Caribbean men, who have enjoyed or continue to enjoy immeasurable success in the fashion industry. I want you all to tell me a bit of the challenges that you all would have encountered in your respective journeys. There have been many, many challenges on the way, but I think what, we, what we're both focusing on is our confidence. Our confidence have got us through those. You know, if you've got confidence and you've got ambition, then you can navigate through barbed wires while others go look for the gate. And I think having that confidence and uh, in what we do and what I do is that that gave me the opportunity to then go out and be brave and battle uh, to be successful in my field. If you think in terms of Savile Row, it's very much a, a mm -hmm. Caucasian environment. And you know, to be the first black, for the first West Indian, and the first person of color to own a business in Savile Row is pretty ph phenomenal because you would expect that your clientele would all be white people. And that was the case. But now we find that being of ethnic minority has been a positive advantage to me. Okay. Because they're discerning when they come along Savile Row looking for someone to create a sartorial image for themselves. They think, you know what? If this guy is successful in Savile Row and has been there for such a long time, he must be really good at what he does. So what was a, a disadvantage in the early days now is a positive advantage. So there have been challenges, but once you have the confidence in what you do, then you can overcome just about any challenges that, put, that come in your way. Now, there's another thing. If you get turned down for any situations, and anyone shuts a door on you, anyone says no, they are actually detour detouring. They're pointing you into another direction. You don't hold us against them. You just keep battling on. And anyone says no, you just mirror that N-O into O-N, and you battle on. Fantastic. And Mr. Peters? Well, you know, confidence, as Andrew said, is a very important asset. It really is. Um, in the early days, there was a challenge of we're not looking for many black models. You know, um, you know black models are really in, se in this season. But I think over time, things have changed. And as the international designers, as the main clients, are becoming international in their perspective, and they realize that diversity is a big consideration. Um, no longer can you see the, the, um, the client that you're selling to as just one type of person. Mm -hmm. With that realization, certainly you need to find a face that can put them on the runway that represent that new client base that you're looking to target or you're looking to tap into. Um, but more importantly, too, it was a matter, another challenge was how do we develop the models from this region to make them of global standards. And I took that job very, very seriously. We didn't always get the support. Mm -hmm. uh, even from our own island, you know, people, we didn't always get the support. But we, what we got was a lot of understanding to say, you know, something is happening here at Saint. And as much as I got some support, limited support, mm -hmm. I took that as an advantage. As Andrew mm -hmm. says, you got to turn the nose into all ends. Um, and getting through the doors of the biggest designers or the biggest clients was also another issue. And I think technology has changed that landscape. And mm -hmm. cast and directors now have the power. At one point, it was really going through an international agency. You know, if you don't have that in with that agency, then you have problems getting through to the clients because they are the middlemen, so to speak. But nowadays, Saint has been really phenomenal in charting a course directly to the clients. So models are, have been booked by us from Jamaica, directly for Louis Vuitton, directly for Calvin Klein World um, debut runways, directly for Prada, directly for Burberry, which is unheard of. And that in itself has lent to a lot of international media. You know, American Vogue did a feature, you know, the man behind Jamaican model wave. Italian Vogue did a feature, the man behind Jamaica's top model. And then the biggest newspaper in France did something rather extraordinary. They did a feature on what we're doing for black models on the world stage because many people couldn't figure out how is this one agency in Jamaica having so many models for the biggest brands. We now have a face of Balenciaga. We now have the polar afferent face, Brad Allen. So that also started to let people understand, yeah, the disadvantageous days are no more. You both mentioned confidence, but how does one build the kind of confidence that you guys are speaking about? Is it a case of faking it till you make it? No, no, no. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Andrew has his thing. 
And you wanted at first? <laughs> but, but, you know, confidence is something, something that comes from the heart. It comes from your soul. It comes from within you. Mm-hmm. It isn't something that you make up at all. It is what you feel. And that confidence is what takes you out there. But it, with that confidence, you've got to be, you know, luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. Mm-hmm. So if you're prepared and the opportunity arises, then that's the luck in your life. But you've got to be able, and to be confident, you've got to be prepared. So whatever field of endeavor you're in, you actually have got to have that feeling in you that you've got what it takes to be successful. Now, my thing of confidence, and it's something I trade my models, you have to be real about what you're getting into. I think research also helps to build confidence when you're knowing what you're getting into. Um, once you understand, and it goes for even basic exams in school. If you study hard, you know the principles, you do the work, you know you're going to pass the exam. So you're going very confident. Um, so you can use that analogy to this and apply it to what this fashion industry is about. You've got to know what you're getting into. And I am not afraid to explain to my models, you're going to meet upon racism. You're going to meet upon rejection. Um, but understand what that's about. Don't take it personal. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think sometimes people get, get it all internalized and it mm-hmm. becomes a whole negative force. Mm-hmm. That really works against you. Posit- I mean, confidence really brings positivity. Mm-hmm. And in my experience, I'm sure in Andrew's, mm-hmm. it also brings positive results. Mm-hmm. You know, because people who are looking on will say, you know what, he knows what he's about and he believes in what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And that element of believing is really what brings confidence. As a people, sometimes we love to cheer down each other. Mm-hmm. It's a thing. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, that is something we know it happens. But if you internalize, sometimes I almost, oh well, in building saint, sometimes I cocoon myself. So I don't entertain negativity in one shape or form. You are really going to people who don't believe in your dream. Mm-hmm. But if you decide to let go of that dream because of what someone said, that it really wasn't a dream. Mm-hmm. You really weren't meant to be what you claim you wanted to be because one person said, no, for me, once you go against my dream, in my zone, you're non-existent. It's like, all right, let's move on. So that, mm-hmm. to me, helps build, refine, you know, re-energize, reboot your whole system as far as the confidence phenomenon goes. <laughs>